We welcome everyone to this February 12th, 2024 meeting of the CISD Board of Trustees. This is a board workshop and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby on the audience for guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. The <laughs> Sorry. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy, and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. And these are our core values. We appreciate your interest in the students at CISD. Now we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. I'm going to ask Kamar Chambers if he'll lead us in a word of prayer. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we first and foremost say thank you, God. We thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we thank you for your grace, mercy, peace, joy, and happiness, Father God. God, we thank you for the love that you've shown us each, each every day. Um, God, we thank you for just being who you are to us. And Father, we thank you that you are able to um, lead, God, and direct us in our truth, and that we are walking in the truth and doing the right things by our children, um, the district, and those that are involved with CISD. God, we thank you right now for this day. We ask all these things your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we'll go to the superintendent's report. Well, first, um, I want to say that I hope everyone had a fun and relaxing winter break. Um, I know we did. It was great to have this time to spend with our families and just to take a little bit of a break to gear up for the spring semester. This week, we are very busy in our spring sports. Um, our final winter sport wraps up as boys basketball hosts Red Oak on senior night. Softball starts its season tomorrow at home against Teague. And boys golf begins tomorrow with the tournament in Dallas. Track and field begins Friday with the meet at Crandall. First pitch for baseball is next Monday at home um, versus against West. And powerlifting, soccer, and tennis are already, all, already underway. So good luck to all of our Tigers who are competing this spring. Last week was our National School Counseling Week. And while we hated to be out because it, we struggled a little bit to celebrate our counselors in the way that they deserve, we want them to know how very, very much that they are appreciated. They do so much more than traditional counseling roles that people think about. They are critical to the mental health and the success of our students and our staff. So we want them to know how very, very much we appreciate everything that, <clears throat> everything that they do. February is also Career Tech Month or CTE Month. The district is spotlighting our different programs on social media and our high school is spotlighting teachers from the programs. Our CTE program does a wonderful job preparing our students for future careers. Some of these are our welding, automotive, culinary arts, and the medical profession. Also next week is FFA week, and we have a lot to be proud of in Corsicana ISD. Our students in FFA are great ambassadors for our district, and we are always proud of them and proud of the um, accolades they receive in competition. So tonight, I am announcing um, my retirement at the end of this um, school year. It's been my privilege to serve our students and staff of this community. We have so many accomplishments to be proud of. I wasn't going to cry. That was going to be one of my accomplishments. Um, <clears throat> I remember in my interview for this job that I said, one of the things that I, shoot. <laughs> one of the things I most wanted was for people to know how great Corsicana 
<laughs> give me tissues. That's that is true board support. Um, the great things that happen, of course, they can ISD. And I think we've done a little bit to accomplish that. We have the most outstanding staff in the state, and that includes our board. I know that our accomplishments exemplify what a team can do when we all work toward a common goal. I am, I am deeply grateful for your unwavering support, and I know that your dedication and our dedication to our students has been the driving force behind our successes. Thank you for the opportunity to serve this remarkable district. Dr. Brown, I would just like to um, say a few words. Barbara and I have been lucky enough to be here since the beginning with Dr. Frost. Um, it has been truly an honor to serve with you this many years. We have been through some tough times and you have brought us through, the, who could have brought us through COVID better than you did? And on the outside, you know, outside of that, here we one district of the year and then board of the year and that is 100% due to you and your staff. That was your award. So it's just been such a privilege. We have been so lucky to have you, and Course Canada ISD is better because of you and will be forever, so you will definitely be missed. First, I want to let everyone else talk first so I can just say ditto. Yeah. But because um, I do want to say I agree with both, both of y'all just said. Um, but the last six years really, truly have been an honor. And I and thank you for letting um, me have the opportunity to work with you as well. Um, it has been a blessing. Thank you. Dr. Frost, on behalf of the board, number one, I mean, these ladies have made some great accolades on you. and. And Lee is right, you know, a lot of these awards, they're all due to you, yeah. right? You sign your leadership, and uh, we couldn't have done it without you. And we couldn't have done it without the staff of CISD. Um, and it just shows your remarkable talent that you are and the people that you've put around you. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, you know, you taught me a lot as a, as a board member. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to miss you. But good luck in your endeavors. Yeah. You've got four and a half more months. <laughs> you got four and a half more months. You, you can miss me in July. <laughs> now, we're going to make her work. We're going to make her work hard. Um, so I just want to say on behalf of the board, thank you and more to come. Thank you. All right. So we are, we're going to take a deviation real quick. We're going to go into closed session for a quick minute under Texas Governance Code 551.01. We are now back from open session. Back to open session, sorry. Uh, is there any action items that we want to take care of before we start? Mr. President, um, it's, it's with great honor that I nominate uh, Mrs. Kendra Rogers as the assistant principal of Collins Intermediate School. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to hire Kendra Rogers as the assistant principal at Collins Intermediate School. 
All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it. Congratulations, Ms. Roberts. I just want to welcome you to uh, back to Corsicana, and we just want you to know that um, we are just so pleased to have you coming to Collins Intermediate and to work with our students. I know you're going to be a difference maker, and um, I want you to know that people went out of their way um, to call me and let me know how wonderful you are mm -hmm. and what a strong administrator you are, um, people you didn't even have um, on your resume. So we welcome you, and we're just very, very pleased to have you. I also had the honor of um, hiring Mr. Terrence Lewis um, to be one of our football coaches. I can hire you because you're not an administrative person. So we want to welcome you and your family um, back to Corsicana. Um, so we. Can I say something about Terrence? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I had a I had a community uh, meeting um, at the MLK Center last year. Last year, and I actually asked him to come down from um, Crowley to talk to our community. And when I'm telling you, and Jamie was there, if I tell you, they are he is they are still passionate about their community. I mean, it just. We believe we believe boy and go, but he believes the community, and he wants the best for our young people and the best for our community. So, Terrence, thank you, Lewis. Thank you so much for your passion for our community. He's my classmate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's go into discussion action items. Uh, food service department update. So Ms. Howell is going to lead this conversation. We also want to thank uh, Mr. Blaylock and Mr. Chambers from Food Services for being here as well. Thank you both. Yes, they are definitely here to answer any questions. So thank you, Dr. Frost, Dr. Brown, and members of the board. Uh, we are here to discuss our child nutrition update for the year. Uh, currently, this is our staff. Uh, we have four people in our office staff. Then we have 15 at CHS, 10 at CMS, uh, 11 at Collins, and then five basically at our elementaries at Bowie, Carroll, at Drain. We still have Head Start. We have two employees there, uh, five at Fannin, six at Navarro, and five at Sam Houston. So a total of 68 with two openings currently. Currently, our, at, all of our students still have free breakfast and lunch um, in our district. Our teachers, it's $2.50 for a breakfast, $4.25 for lunch. A visitor is $3.50 for breakfast, a child visitor. I think I have it backwards, I apologize. $2.50 for a child visitor, $3.50 for an adult, and $4.25 for lunch for both of those. So what I did is I broke it down for the past three years from 2021, 22, 22, 23 versus our first semester for 23, 24 for our reimbursements or how, and how many, um, right here is how many meals were served. So in 21, 22, we were coming right out of COVID. We served 400, about 487,000 breakfasts uh, that year and 637 lunches. In 2022, you can see that we went to 480,000 breakfast. Uh, we were working really hard on trying to get our breakfast numbers increased, so especially our high school kids, our athletes, making sure that they eat before they go to class. And in 2022, that we served 784,394 lunches. So currently in the first semester, we have already served 298,452 breakfast meals, and we are on track to be close to 600,000 uh, meals for breakfast. So that's awesome. That means we are serving more students, uh, we're making sure our athletes are eating, and if our kids are coming in late, we're taking care of them as well. Currently for lunch, just for the first semester, we've served 428,645. Uh, we're on track to be over 850,000 meals. So we're really proud of that as well. So we've tried to increase the options, increase the meals, and the, the quality of the food so that kids are really interested in eating these meals. Even though it's free, we still want them to be interested in eating our meals. So we get a federal reimbursement for every meal our students eat. So in 2021, 2022, 
our reimbursement was around 1.2 million for breakfast and 2.7 for lunch. Um, in 2022-23, uh, we increased that for to 1.3 million for breakfast and 3.4 million for our lunches. Uh, currently, for breakfast, we're right at $800,000, so we're on track. Um, to double that and to be over that 1.3 million. And then we're, we have 1.7 million so far in reimbursements for lunch. So that's just for our first semester. We still have the second semester to go for our federal reimbursements. So back in 2022, we really increased our a la carte, which is the drinks we serve, the snacks we serve. We really increased that at the high school and middle school. And as you can see in 2021 at the high school, uh, we only had $2,724 in a la carte. Then in 2022, it went to 31,956. And so far, just for the fall semester, we're at 39,000. So it's crazy, they love their snacks. I mean, they like their waters and their juices and their snacks. They are healthy snacks. So currently we're at 135,000 for our snacks. Uh, we will, of course, probably double that by the end of the year. Um, so that's where we are a la carte. So uh, Mr. Blaylock and his team has done a really good job on the offerings and what we offer our students. And it's at a good cost as well. So our students are really interested in, in purchasing those items. So what trainings have they completed so far this year? Uh, workplace safety, using the fire extinguishers, bloodborne pathogens, health inspections, um, boiling pasta techniques, knife skills, enhancing our flavors, recipe and workstations, uh, salsa, uh, seasoning usage and techniques, uh, food handlers. So there's different, this is just a, a small portion of the um, trainings that our ladies and gentlemen go through in the child nutrition department, but we wanted to highlight these. And then what are we gonna do to keep improving this department? Uh, Aubrey meets with, the, with his staff monthly trainings to improve their culinary skills. He meets with the uh, managers on a weekly basis. Uh, we want to continue to improve our quality of food and the number of choices. That's a big deal for us. In December, we surveyed our CHS students and CMS students just to find out what do you like and what can we do to improve. So we're using that to, to move forward into the spring. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. Adam decided to try something new and he's not here. Um, <laughs> increase and improve our a la carte items and to continue to upgrade our um, serving lines in, at the, in the kitchen. So especially at the high school, we've, in, we've added a pizza line this year. Uh, so that was really nice, we got that added. And we'll continue to use our reimbursements on improving our, our kitchens at each campus. And that's all I have. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer or Mr. Blaylock or Mr. Chambers. I just need you to cut out the candy and the from Bowie. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The resolution for volunteer chapter. So in your board packet is a description of um, local policy GKG, which our recommendation is to leave our local policy as it is, um, which allows our chaplains to serve as volunteers um, within our schools. I can think of a couple of times when they have been um, critical assets for us. Um, we have called and asked them to come in if there was a student death or we had need for something like that. And we just work so well with our local chaplains and ministers and we want them to be able to continue to come in as volunteers using the same volunteer protocols as we currently have in place. So if you, if you, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer those. If you don't have any questions or if I resolve all your questions um, that you might ask, we'll put this in the consent agenda for the next board meeting. It's something each district has to approve the resolution. So this is like a first reading of this policy. Any questions? If you have any questions, please let us know by Friday. Mm -hmm. Please let us know by Friday if you have any questions. All right. Thank hey, you, Dr. Ross. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, first reading, TASB update 122. So in your board packet are the um, significant changes to um, update to policy, legal and local, related to update 122, which is over 200 pages. 
Um, we have gone through this. We've looked at all of the modifications. A lot has to do with um, security. Um, just security on the ground as well as cybersecurity. We have procedures and processes in place to fulfill the requirements of those um, requirements. We also have some modifications to accelerated instruction and what students um, that accelerated instruction um, including um, is required for, including our dyslexic students and identification of those students. Um, class rank is included. Um, we are required to post our procedures and include in policy um, now um, how we determine class rank. So it won't be a change to our procedures, but it will be an inclusion in our policy. Um, we, we've talked a lot and we do talk a lot about medical treatment for students, the opioid antagonist um, because of fentanyl. And I went to um, a very informative um, session at midwinter on opioids and fentanyl particularly. And Fortunately, again, with our safety and security and our medical treatments, we are ahead of the game. But what this policy requires is to have um, the antigen on each campus, which we do already have that, and we're going to expand that. And then um, the, the responses for crisis intervention and, and an anonymity for the people who report um, different bullying or harassment or anything like that, cyber harassment. Um, we already have that in place um, with our systems that are on our website. So we're ahead of the game um, on that one as well. So while the, the legislature did create a great number of policies. There's not significant modifications to the procedures that we have in, have in place. Most of the time what it did was just put those into a requirement. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Anyone have any questions for that far? I think we're I think okay. We're good. It'll be in consent agenda. It will for the next for for approval at the next board meeting. Okay. All right. We are now moving to letter D, order of board of trustee election. Texas law requires that the board of trustees order the election to be held on May 4th, 2024. Um, this action would order the election to be held on that day for board trustee places three and four. <clears throat> so I'll entertain a motion. So we can have this election on May 4th. I move that we approve the order of election for CISD Board of Trustees place three and four to be held on May 4th, 2024. Second. The motion and a second to approve the order of election for CISD Board of Trustees places three and four to be held on May 4th, 2024. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it and we will have we have approved the elect order of election for CISD Board of Trustees, places three and four to be held on May 4th, 2024. Ms. Harrison, is there any audience for guests? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. All right, we are going to move into closed session as permitted by Texas Governance Code Section 551.01. Thank you very much.